when the community talks about OP loadouts or builds, they tend to mean things that will provide the most largest and quickest amount of damage in a short period of time, like Symphoseps and One Two Punch, or Thunder Coil with any mini focus builds. Time and time again they prove to be very useful for the general masses, with some being too strong and overall being nerfed. One build that many of you have heard is the famous Liar's Handshake and One Two Punch build for a singular high DPS action which proved to be extremely effective when put to the test against bosses and generally everything, and it was so good that part of the build got nerfed quite a while back. However, it's still good, and this is what we'll be going over with today. Hello everyone, 3D here, here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for this week's content. Today we'll be looking at a very OP single target DPS focus build for the Hunters, which of course will allow you to produce a large amount of damage in a singular combo, which works great against bosses and ultras alike. This version I have to show will have the common perks and mods you'll be fully familiar with, but in my version I've added in some more mine cells to spice the build up some more and to give you some alternative means of customizations, while also breaking down the numbers for all you fans of big numbers out there. So starting off with the subclass, we will be going with the Way of the Warrior tree to make full use of its melee perks and to allow us to proc war mine cells through either grenades or melee. Just like the last build video based around this class, Way of the Warrior offers focus on melee centric abilities for increasing damage in the long run, and also increasing survivability where lack of defense isn't available. Perks such as Combination Blow, which trigger a health regen and damage increase up to times 3, and Combat Flow are the two iconic abilities that are perfected for a simple yet devastating 1 2 punch lies build. With the amped up melee damage provided by the Combination Blow, and combat flow providing a full dodge regen upon kills, it means we can combo the two for a deadly approach against the toughest of adds. At the same time, combining Gambler's dodge with combat flow can increase the amount of melees and dodge we can do indefinitely, and if you can pull this off successfully, then you always have combination flow damage output always at max. This is what we want, we want maximum damage in a short time frame, nothing more, nothing less. For grenades, I've chosen the Arc Bolts for a multi-hit range and tagging against multiple enemies at once, and although their damage isn't the greatest against majors or ultra level enemies, I can use them more effectively against the minor adds so I can proc a cell to weaken them, and then set me up for getting up close and personal. To be quite honest, you're not really going to be using grenades all the time, just every now and then, so really you can be flexible in the grenade usage of whatever ones you want to pick. For weapons, you're going to want to focus on close quarter weaponry like usual, so you can easily switch between the milling and using your primary or secondary as backup for extra amounts of damage against mobs. You also want to have at least one heavy hard hitting weaponry against those that are a pain to deal with when you can't get up close and personal at times. For primary, I've gone with the Escape Velocity SMG with Grave Robber and Surrounded, a weapon that many would not choose for its lack of damage. The weapon is quite flexible for taking on minor to major adds with ease of use, and can hipfire pretty well without a mod needed to support it. With this role, it's designed around CQC makes it superb for the running gun loadout as I can shoot my way through a horde of enemies, and then melee to fully reload my weapon thanks to the Grave Robber perk, plus with the added on surrounded perk slash mod for extra damage, and weapon trait of being a lightweight free, overall makes you lethal for dodging in and out of danger. Ideally, you'll want to look for a weapon that comes with Grave Robber for either your primary or secondary for the build, so you can make full use of the perk, and if you manage to get the weapon roll I have, that's even more great. Secondary wise, we have the Python Shotgun with 1 2 Punch, Overflow, and a boss spec mod that does incredible damage against bosses and mages, and well, generally anything to be honest. Compared to your Hall Thrones and Perfect Paradox, this weapon is slightly easier to get by doing Drifter's Ritual Bounty. What makes the weapon special for the build is that it's an aggressive frame shotgun that will provide an extra boost of damage compared to using either Hall Thrones or Perfect Paradox. It comes with 1 2 Punch, which will make up the vast majority of the weapon's damage, and it also comes with Overflow, a perk that on the shotgun makes it very powerful for continuous damage against bosses. For example, it will push your magazine size from 5 to 10. In general, this weapon will perform great when used in the right areas. But if you don't have this weapon, then try and get the Hawthorne shotgun instead. And for a heavy, I've gone with the Leviathan's Breath bow, for its very high stun rate against higher tier mobs, and great effectiveness against invaders and gambit. As this build will see a high usage in gambit, this bow will make short work against bosses for flinching them per shot, with high damage following them, 
and then upon evading will one shot anyone you hit with extreme prejudice, and I mean extreme, to where you can one shot players in the supers. It's both enlightening and effective when put to good use. For stats, nothing within the stats areas need to be heavily invested in this time round, so you can freely pick and choose which stats you want to invest in the most in now. As we do have combat flow providing us with instant melee recharge and gamblers dodge combo, both our strength and mobility stat can be left wherever they are, unless you wish to improve them for personal reasons. The rest of the stats should be around the 50 section, with resilience being at the moderate level, while recovery can be pushed up to the 60 to 70 plus ranges for faster recovery time. Overall, you have free reign in this area, so do try and focus on survivability though, as best as possible, as this will allow you to survive longer and do the combo with 1 2 punch and Lies Handshake a lot more longer. For armor, the Lies Handshake Gauntlets with either Solar or Arc Affinity applied is the best role you want to go with, so you can make use of the mod Momentum Transfer for Midi or Impact Induction for Grenade Regen. Whatever one you choose will influence which ability you make full use of and would be wise to invest via stats wise as well to get a big payoff overall, especially when being combined with the Warmind cells. The rest of the armor you're going to need either season 9 or 10 armor pieces for the necessary mods I have. You'll need to have at least a void armor piece for the Warmind protection and power of attribution mod and at least a 6 slot cloak to put in the Thunder Coil mod. Now for the mods you do have the following. Head we have resilience and power of attribution mod. Arm, we have recovery and impact induction mod. Chest, we have recovery and time and surge mod. Leg, we have resilience and warm and protection mod. Cloak, we have concussive damner, thunder coil, outreach, and global reach mod. Now, if you're familiar with a 1 2 punch build, then you would understand the simple process of activating it and going to town the ads you face, so I won't go through the long process of explaining how it all works, but rather I'll show you everything I possibly can while also explaining the numbers. As the cross counter pearl activates via being a hit or triggering your arc melee ability, we can always have this active and one shot mobs easily as long as we have the two following scenarios occur. Now the numbers we get will vary upon whether we hit via body or via crit, etc. As you can see from this clip here, our damage from landing our pellet shots come to around 17,000 via crit, and then following up afterwards with a 1 2 punch from the coil and cross counter will come to around a total of 20,000 from just that with no stacking or bus, just the melee alone. Now all this combined will give you a grand total of 37,000 damage. Now that is just from the one combo alone, if we times it by 5 to our shotgun's overall magazine size, we will get 185,000, which is more than enough to kill ultras barebone wise and do about a quarter of a boss's health if you were to take on the boss on your own. Now, the power of the mod is meant to provide an extra 10% of damage to our weapons, while combination blow can stack up to times 3 as long as we dodge a melee to stack. Now, with these in mind, upon testing, we can get our shotgun damage changed to 18,600 crit instead of 17,000 crit, and then with times 3 in combination blow, 1 2 punch, thunder coil, and cross counter, we now have 65,942 or just 65,900 for melee damage. So yeah, that's a lot of damage I must say from a simple melee attack, and it only requires us to do that 3 times to get that buff. Now if we add all of this up together, it will equal 84,500. Yep, still pretty high. Now if you go ahead and times that by 5 per shotgun round in the magazine, it will equal a grand total of 422,500. Yep. You've heard that right, you will pull off 422,500 damage from the whole combo alone, times 5 to the magazine in your weapon. To put this in perspective, that is enough to kill 2 ultra mobs back to back, whilst having at least 1 round left in the magazine if overflow isn't active, and it's pretty much an overkill when you think about it. Against bosses, you can imagine the amount of damage you can do against, say, a Gambit boss from the first phase, then to the second phase and third phase, etc. From playing around in Custom Gambit on my own, I can do around half of the boss's health in the first phase easily, and then on the second half, I can do another one fifth of the boss's health, plus more. And then the third phase, if we get lucky, we can do either two thirds of his health easily, or we can basically completely destroy him in one go in the second or third phase. 
Now, please remember, this is on my own though. If imagine if I did this in a team, then yes, it would only take us two phases to basically take out a Gambit boss in a Gambit match. This build will do the work for you, as shown, and will make taking on the very annoying enemy stomping mobs a lot more easier for you and everyone else, as long as you fill in the requirements. Although with great power comes with disadvantages that for some can place you in great danger if you don't think fast. A prime example of this is being surrounded when trying to pull off the combo. Now, as long as you get the times free stack for combination below, you can go and do whatever you want as you only have 20 seconds. But when doing a combo and then trying to pull it off against a large mob, you'll find that it doesn't always work in your favour as this is simply because there might be too much things happening around you for you to 100% pull this off. And you'll find that 5 times out of 10 you will fail trying to pull this combo off successfully. And this will happen. It's not a big problem and it's not really an issue. But it's more for you to be aware of your surroundings and think to yourself, should I engage and take on the Major and Ultra? Or should I back off? And all of that at the end of the day will depend on how much health you have left and whether the risk is worth taking. Another common issue to be aware of is that using this in Gambit, you won't have a great way to counter invaders as though yes, I do have the Leviathan's Breath which is pretty amazing to use. If I can't get ammo for it, then there's no chance for me taking them on unless I get lucky and taking them on with my shotgun or SMG or even super, which would be more of a last resort. Having a heavy finder mod is worth investing for this so you can at least have a fighting chance, but if it becomes too much then you can always swap out your primary, your secondary or heavy to a weapon that has more range or damage. But at the end of the day it will all be down to you to decide on how you wish to engage. You don't have to engage, you can always back off and go hide which I tend to do 9 times out of 10. Effectively the build does what it's described to do and does it effectively against everyone and the specific targeted group. Whether you want to use this in Rage, Strikes or even Gambit Prime, whichever one you pick then the build will serve you well and prove useful for reducing large but quick amount of damage that many players may seek. Now I recommend you guys go ahead and play around with it and see how it works out and if it takes on bosses the way that it's designed to do then you generally have a keeper that will last you for many many seasons to go. So if you enjoyed the video then by all means do leave a like and a sub. And also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by everyone and I'll see you guys in the next one.